makes you think you're a high value man? The car you drive? No, the value I put out into the world. What about your character? I have great character. I've built myself to basically have better choices. You want to know why? Because women can choose and make a choice. They can. They can say, I don't want to date a man that makes like six figures. They can. And then what are you doing? You're but demeaning a man. But we're not talking about that. Women that's can not talk the about situation that Listen, hold on. That's not the conversation. A woman can say, I want to date a man less than 5'8". And a man could be 5'4". Do they, do they care about... What does that have to do ostracizing all of those with men? anything? If a fat man is sitting here, he can be a fat man, right? Uh -huh. But if a fat woman is sitting here, you would say, oh, no, we're body positive. Oh, no, we can't say that. We can't. It's all about picking her up. So every time you're saying something for a man, Bro, it's down. You got, you got a lot on your back, yeah, okay? Man. So what I'm I want to be I'm clear, just not just for you, but for everybody out there, is the car you drive, your resume, your bank account, uh -huh. your accolades is not what makes you a high-value man. Not not. We are all not defined not. by the sum of our deeds and our character, and you, brother, are coming up to the sum of zero. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It doesn't work like that. She's they're trying to change what a high value man is. Sorry, a high value man is not how he treats you. Like, granted, you still want to be a gentleman, but a high value man is what you bring to the situation. It's what you bring to society. It's not how nice you are to women. You could be a high value lover, but when we're talking high value man, the man that can change somebody's life. The man that could change, that could put you in position of power, that's a different ball game. I've always said a high value man is somebody that can get on the phone and get somebody a job, whether they're hiring them or whether they can go through their networking system and get somebody hired and change somebody's life. That's a high value man. A high value man is not the guy that's just catering to women, even though he has the money. That's what women are going to say. Oh, you got all the money, so you recognize a strong woman that makes you high value. No, strong women are turned offs to high value men. High value men do not go towards dominant women whatsoever. We end up with nice, submissive women. That's what a, a high value man does. You never see two kings run a kingdom. You ain't never seen a couple like Claire Huxtable. You ain't never seen that. The Cosby show with Claire Huxtable. You ain't never seen that. So understand, the women are wrong in this situation. If that man could bring resources to the table and change your life, that's high value, period. Not how he treats you. Because high value men, like he said, he ain't dealing with the fat chicks. They're not dealing with combative women. They're not doing that. And that's one thing in the black community that a lot of um, high value men have to stop doing is arguing with these dominant black women. Let them go. Go see if the white guy want them. You go do what you do, whether you got to get a passport or whatever. But stay away from women like that, bro. They're, they're good. You know, those type of girls are good. When y'all sitting around at the family reunion and you're cracking jokes and y'all need something to do and they your auntie or your cousin, that's when those girls are good for. When 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 there's beta males who, who don't have no life, let's just go coop up and argue with women. That's what those girls are good for. When you're a man and you got a dream and a vision, these girls are just clowns to you. That's real talk. They clowns. When I asked you guys earlier, what do you bring to the table? All the things that you guys mentioned are easily replaceable by a 21-year-old girl. So how are you gonna keep a guy around that has options? We asked you guys that question for a purpose. Most women provide the same things over and over again, and if they don't provide those same things over, they provide, oh, I have money and status, as if men care about that. We don't. But what happens yeah. if you're so not you guys? Care about? That's the scary part. You Nothing. don't know. <laughs> Nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. No, no, no. That's the scary part. Like, you don't know. See, here's the yeah. difference between men and women. Men have to understand women to attract them and know what they want. Women, on the other hand, don't have to understand men or know what they want to attract them. That is why women are able to live in bizarro world and think, I'm going to bring myself to the table and that's enough. But the reality is this. You bring enough for sex, but you don't bring enough for a relationship. Most girls have enough to attain a guy, but they don't have enough to retain a guy. Whew. And he is absolutely right. This is why as a man, you must separate the real woman from the fun woman. There's a lot of girls out there that are just fun. I told a dude yesterday... Women are doing nothing but getting plastic surgery, fake hair, big titties, big butts, trying to look like an IG model just to get a bummy dude at the end of the day. Why? Because they're just using their look as power. 
So whoever their looks are going to work on, that's who a woman is going to keep around them now because they're suffering from a lot of insecurities. They can get the man, but they can't keep the man. The more sexy they are, the more they're going to get a man after he gets used to the sex. He's going to go on to a whole nother woman. They can't retain a man. That's what women are battling now It's because when they're younger, it works in their favor. But when they but as they get older, the depression starts to kick in. Then. Let's say we're at the club and someone grabs your ass or does some shit to you, right? I'm supposed to defend you, right? I throw an elbow. Yeah. Okay, but but I'm supposed to do something <laughs> quick, for you, right? right? Someone yeah. breaks into the house. I'm supposed to go ahead and just go handle it, right? What if in some weird dream world, I said I you had to tell me to do that? How would that make you feel? That's why I divorced. You. Like you. Would it, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Yeah. What if you had? To, what if you had to tell me to defend you? How would that make you feel? Not good. Like you're not the one. Okay. Like you don't care about me enough to defend me without me telling you to. Yeah. Fantastic. What about you? You're not a man. Fantastic. What about you? Yeah, like Masha said, I shouldn't have to tell you. So why the fuck should I have to tell you to stop acting like a hoe, going to the club, keeping your Instagram no, up, dressing sense. like a whore, etc.? Easy to me how women expect men to just get it, do what they're supposed to do, adhere to their masculine burden performance. But women, on the other hand, oh, you, you don't like me going to the club with my friends? You don't like me You're talking insecure. about exes? You're insecure? Oh my god. It's like, I have to do what's right all the time, but I have to tell you to do your fucking job? A lot of women... And he's absolutely right. This is why, as a man, it is very crucial for you to know who you are, what lane you in, and what type of women you're going to attract. That is extremely important because when a woman finds the man that she's attracted to in her lane, she automatically adjusts. You don't have to train her. The only time you have to tell a woman not to go to the club, not to be with her friends, not to do that is when you are with a woman who grabbed who, who who's with you because she didn't want to be lonely. She just wants to tell her girls, hey, I have a boyfriend. But when women come across the guy that they really like, they automatically fall into feminine frame. You think I'm cute? Yeah. So, listen though, tell me your name. Joya. Joya, I bet. Listen, only question I really got for you is, what's the biggest red flag in a guy? Um, I also talked to my ex, so probably that. Talking to your ex? Yeah. You talk to your ex? Yeah. So, that's a, that's a red flag on you then. Yeah. Oh, it's my biggest red flag for anybody else? Yeah, for a, a man. Oh. So talking to their ex. What do you mean by that? So like, so, hey, oh, you don't count for me though. You hell, bro. Listen. I don't want to talk to him no more. It's a work in progress. Word. Yeah. So you trying to move on with that? Yeah. When it, there is no red flags. There's a lot of red flags for people to watch out for. But let me tell you something. The more desperate you are to have a relationship, the less red flags you're going to see. Most red flags as a man, as you start to get your life together, you should be able to see red flags just off the color of her hair, just off the clothes that she's wearing, just off the way she's carrying herself. There should be nothing that comes out of her mouth that should change your red flag. You have to get to that point where you can look and you know that's a red flag. She comes with this and it has all this before she can even speak. I'm going to know where I can place her in my life. That's where men have to get to. The more desperate you are, the less flags you're going to look at because you're trying to get to the overall goal of sex. You know, everybody has standards. Everybody would tell you what they're going to date, what they're not going to date, what they're going to accept for people, what they're not going to accept people, right? But things change when you don't have that many options. You start to change your standards around because ultimately you want to be with somebody to have sex and relations with, right? So you start to drop your standards the, the, the longer you go to where you can't utilize your standards. Am I making sense here? What am I trying to say? You can spot red flags faster whenever you have options. To have options, you have to make yourself somebody that... Go, that's going to have options. You have to make yourself the man that women want in order for you to have standards to utilize these red flags that you're going to spot out. Most guys are going to ignore the red flags because they're just happy she's talking to them. Come on, hop on in. I got you. Oh, let me unlock it. Let me unlock it. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. The sooner you know this about women, the better. 
every man must understand that women will betray you. It's not a matter of if, it's just when. That's just a part of being a man. Women will lie to you, cheat on you, stab you in the back, shit. They might even steal from you. But if you show up in situations dealing with women not understanding this shit, all you're doing is setting yourself up to get hurt time and time again. So as a man moving forward, you have to know in the back of your mind, the woman that's next to you, there's a good chance that she'll betray you. You got to be okay with that. That's a part of being a man. You guys should not be walking into relationships thinking that she's going to play you or be in a relationship where you got to walk around thinking this. When a woman really likes you, you're going to know. You don't even have to question it. You're going to know that she's going to be loyal. The girl that's not going to be loyal is going to have you walking on eggshells the entire relationship, and that's going to be your red flag. Most guys now are so scared that you're getting in relationships scared that something bad is going to happen and you're changing the vibe of the, the chemistry. That's what's happening. People are so afraid of being hurt that there's no chemistry in relationships. It's all robotic. What you bring to the table, what you're doing, how, how many people you have, how many people you've been with, how many this, how many that. When you sit down and you talk to somebody um, on a date and it feels like an interview, that's because the person in front of you is really insecure if they're asking you the questions. If you sit down in front of a woman and you start asking a whole bunch of questions about her life, she's going to think you're fucking insecure and it's going to shape shift the way that you and her get to know each other. Know your lane. The quicker you know your lane, the better life is going to be.